Hello everyone, this is Archita and you are watching the Pharmacopedia. So I just hope that you all are doing well. So this is the lecture number two of the medicinal chemistry series. So in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the SAR of H1 antagonist and its classification. Also, we have seen the histamine and its synthesis as well. So in today's lecture, we'll be discussing about the structure activity relationship of the H2 antihistaminics. But before that, we'll be seeing that what are H2 antihistaminics. So H2 antihistaminics are also known as H2 blockers and H2 antagonist. So uh, what it does is it competitively antagonize the action of histamine at the H2 receptor. So what it does is, uh, suppose this is the H2 receptor, okay? So this is the H2 receptor and this is histamine. So this H2 uh, blockers, it competitively antagonize the action of histamine at the H2 receptor and therefore histamine cannot bind to the H2 receptor. So the action is not seen. So the second point says that these drugs block the histamine induced gastric secretion. What I mean to say dear students uh, that uh, there is a gastric parietal cells okay present uh, in the stomach obviously it's a gastric parietal cell so it will be present in the stomach. So uh, at these parietal cells the H2 receptors are located. Okay, gastric parietal cells pe kya hai? H2 receptors located hote hai. and when histamine gets binded to these H2 re, uh, receptors uh, at the gastric parietal cells, then it induces the gastric uh, secretion. Okay, jab, histum, uh, jab histamine H2 receptors pe jake bind karta hai at the gastric parietal cell, then it promotes the gastric secretion. Okay, so therefore this drug actually, this H2 blockers block the histamine induced gastric secretion. Okay, as it competitively antagonizes the action of histamine at the H2 receptors. Okay, dear students, uh, moving ahead to the third point that this H2 blockers have the anti-ulcerogenic effect. Uh, how? As it blocks the secretion, the gastric acid secretion, so therefore uh, it has anti-ulcerogenic effect and therefore it is used in the treatment of the peptic ulcer disease. What are peptic ulcer disease? We'll be understanding that. So it's a group of upper GIT tract disorder, okay? So it's an upper gastrointestinal tract disorder uh, which is being characterized by mucosal erosions. Jo bhi, uh, gastric uh, area mein jo bhi, uh, jo bhi mucus layer hai, jo bhi mucus layer present hote hai, usme kya hote uski erosions ho jati hai. Uh, in which case, in the case of the peptic ulcer disease. Peptic ulcer disease ke case mein kya hai? Due to the uh, excessive gastric acid secretions, the mucosal layer actually got damages. Uh, okay. So, uh, this is basically the H2 blockers are used in the treatment of this uh, peptic ulcer disease. So, this mucosal erosion, ch erosion should be greater than or equal to 0.5 centimeter. Okay, dear students, and therefore, uh, this H2 blockers has a significant role in the peptic ulcer disease. Moving ahead to the therapeutic applications of the H2 uh, blockers. So, this H2 blockers uh, are used uh, in the treatment of the acid peptic disorders such as the heartburn. Jo, uh, H2 blockers are used in the heartburn ki treatment, mein hota hai, GRD, that is gastroesophageal uh, reflux disease, the gastric and the duodenal ulcers, and also it is used in the treatment of the Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Remember, dear students, this. S2 blockers are also used in the treatment of the Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Uh, that is the excess production of the uh, of the gastric uh, secretions. Okay, so uh, when I talk about this duodenal ulcers, so this uh, S2 blockers actually heals the 60 to 70 percent of the duodenal ulcers within the four weeks. Okay. Ye H2 blockers kya karte hain? Ye do no duodenal ulcers ko, that is 60 to 70 percent duodenal ulcers ko ye heal karte hain within the four, within four weeks and about, uh, about uh, 70 to, that is, it is 60 to 80 percent and about 70 to 90 percent uh, of the duodenal the ulcers is been healed within the eight weeks, okay? Uh, so it's the time duration. Okay, so H2 blockers have duodenal ulcers. Ko, that is 60 to 80 percent of the duodenal ulcers are healed within four weeks, and about 70 to 90 percent of the of the duodenal ulcers are healed within eight weeks. Okay, uh, so this, uh, as the sixth point says, that this uh, uh, peptic ulcer disease basically results from the erosive action of the acid and the pepsin. Stomach ke andar ya gastric acid secretions mein kya hote hain? That is the acid, HCL ka secretion hota hai, thik hai? 
HCL का that is hydrochloric acids के secretions होते for the uh, complete digestion of the food that we intake. Okay, so this uh, uh, this uh, this peptic ulcer disease is basically uh, caused due to the erosive actions or the excessive secretion of this acid and the pepsin uh, enzyme. Okay, moving ahead uh, to the classification, but before that, just uh, let me uh, give you a quick review. Uh, so this H2 antihistaminics, what it does, it competitive antagonizes the action of histamine at the H2 receptors. So जो ये H2 blockers है, इसका main जो function है, वो किस में है? Uh, block करना किसके secretions को? Gastric secretions को, ठीक है? So it, its action is basically localized to the uh, to the GIT tract. Okay, moving ahead to the classification of the uh, H2 antihistaminics, but we will be seeing the broad category, okay? Because in the syllabus, we have to study H2 antihistaminics, also we have to study the proton pump inhibitors, okay? So, we will understand that how many things in the broad classifications come from the broad classifications. ठीक है जब मैंने बात किया था पेप्टिक अल्सर डिजीज की तो उसमें मैंने आपको बताया था क्या होता था एक्सेस सिक्रीशन हो रहा था ठीक है गैस्ट्रिक एक्सेस गैस्ट्रिक सिक्रीशन हो रहा था तो इसमें दो वेज से ट्रीटमेंट टू वेज से इसका ट्रीटमेंट हो सकता है ठीक है एक्सेस गैस्ट्रिक सिक्रीशन सो इसका टू वेज से इसका ट्रीटमेंट हो सकता है हाउ फर्स्टली यू कैन गिव द एंटी एसिड्स ठीक है आप एंटी एसिड्स देके क्या कर सकते हैं गैस्ट्रिक एसिड्स को न्यूट्रलाइज कर सकते हैं ठीक है या तो वो जो दूसरा है वो क्या कर सकते हैं आप इसको इनहिबिट कर सकते हैं गैस्ट्रिक एसिड के सिक्रीशंस को आप इनहिबिट कर सकते हैं ओके सो एंटीसिड्स का जो भी फंक्शन है वो तो टेंपरेरी फंक्शन हो गया कि लाइक व्हेन देयर इज एन एक्सेस गैस्ट्रिक एसिड सिक्रीशन यू जस्ट टेक एन एंटीसिड और वो कंप्लीटली न्यूट्रलाइज हो जाता है बट व्हेन आई व्हेन आई टॉक अबाउट द इनहिबिशन तो इनहिबिशन क्या है वो वो क्या है वो हीलिंग प्रोसेस है वो हीलिंग प्रोसेस है सो हियर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द गैस्ट्रिक एसिड सिक्रीशन इनहिबिटर्स दैट कम्स अंडर द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द ड्रग्स फॉर द पेप्टिक अल्सर्स Okay, so there comes the first category, which is the H2 antihistaminics. So H2 antihistaminics can there are the cimetidine, ranitidine, famotidine, roxetidine, and the lefotidine. So in the syllabus, it is cimetidine, ranitidine, and the famotidine. These three structures you have to learn. And if I talk about synthesis, synthesis you have to learn cimetidine. Okay, so there is the anticholinergic. Anticholinergic is the POP, that is pyrenzepine, oxyphenonium, and the propanthaline. The third is the proton pump inhibitors, which can there are omeprazole, S-omeprazole, pantoprazole, lansoprazole, and the rabiprazole. The fourth is the prostaglandin analog, that is mesoprostol. This is the functioning of clear when I'll be discussing about the mechanism of action, uh, mechanism of action of the H2 blockers. Okay, so in that case, I'll be explaining ki ye drugs kaise actually work karte hai, uh, at the gas uh, in uh, by in a uh, in, and plays the role in the inhibition of the gastric acid. Okay, so it will be clear uh, when I'll be discussing about the mechanism of actions. Okay, moving ahead uh, to the structures. Okay, here we will see structures like cimetidine, ranitidine and famotidine which will be useful for your syllabus or university exams or will be asked for them. Okay, so when I talk about the cimetidine, so as you can see, the cimetidine contains an imidazole. Okay, so the cimetidine uh, contains an imidazole ring. Okay, the cimetidine contains an imidazole, uh, imidazole uh, heterocyclic uh, ring. And then uh, when I talk about this side chain, okay, that is the methyl sulfur ethyl group. Uh, it's same for all the rest of the two, that is the ranitidine and the famotidine. Firstly, we'll be seeing the heterocyclic group. ठीक है तो सिमेटिडीन के केस में हेट्रोसाइक्लिक ग्रुप क्या है इमिडाजोल है रेनेटिडीन के केस में क्या है फ्यूरॉन है एंड फेमोटिडीन के केस में क्या है थायाजोल है सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द बेसिक मोइटिडियर स्टूडेंट्स द सिमेटिडीन के केस में क्या है हेट्रोसाइक्लिक ग्रुप इमिडाजोल है रेनेटिडीन के केस में क्या है फ्यूरॉन है एंड फेमोटिडीन के केस में क्या है थायाजोल है Okay, uh, again I am saying that students are saying ki uh, it's very very difficult for them to recall the structure. So, for those students, I will just say that you have to basic structure. If you don't remember the uh, substituents, so just try to remember the basic uh, uh, structure. Just as in metadine case, there is imidazole. Hai. So, in imidazole, there is no corrections. Nahi honi you have to draw the imidazole ring correctly. Okay, in case, there is furon. Hai. So, you just have to draw the furon ring correctly. 
okay so when i talk about this uh, uh, this chain so it contains a uh, methyl sulfur ethyl group and so it is same for the rest of the two that is the ranitidine and the cimetidine okay uh, so when i talk about the substituent so cimetidine con contains a symbol substitution that is the methyl group ka isme substitution dekha jata hai ranitidine ke case mein uh, uh, tertiary amine hai that is 3 degree amine is same and uh, फेमोटिडीन के केस में क्या है फेमोटिडीन के केस में भी क्या है सब्सटीट्यूशन है दैट इज द कार्बन कंटेनिंग द फ्री नाइट्रोजन ग्रुप ओके सो आप इस तरीके से इसको याद रख सकते हैं दैट सिमेटिडीन के केस में जो सब्सटीट्यूएंट है वो है मिथाइल ग्रुप रेनेटिडीन के केस में टर्शरी अमीन है एंड देन फेमोटिडीन के केस में क्या है द कार्बन कंटेनिंग द थ्री नाइट्रोजन ग्रुप ओके सो वेन आई टॉक अबाउट द मॉडिफिकेशन ठीक है जो जो भी उसके थेरापेटिक एक्शन में जो भी थेरापेटिक एप्लीकेशन में जो भी डिफरेंसेज आते हैं वो मॉडिफिकेशन की वजह से आते हैं जो हम पढ़ते हैं स्ट्रक्चर एक्टिविटी रिलेशनशिप में सो द मेजर मॉडिफिकेशन इज सीन एट दिस प्लेस ओके सो द मेजर मॉडिफिकेशन इज सीन एट दिस प्लेस ओके सो वेन आई टॉक अबाउट दिस सिमेटिडीन सो इट्स इट कंटेन्स एंड ग्वानेडीन एनोलॉग ठीक है इसके अंदर क्या है ग्वानेडीन एनालॉग है ओके डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो वेन आई बी टेलिंग यू अबाउट द्वेनेडीन ग्वेनेडीन स्ट्रक्चर सो ग्वेनेडीन का अगर स्ट्रक्चर में अगर हम देखेंगे तो ग्वेनेडीन के स्ट्रक्चर में क्या है दैट इज सी डबल बॉन्ड एन एंड सिंगल बॉन्ड एन एच टू एन एच टू ओके सो अगर यहाँ पे एन एच है तो इट्स ग्वेनेडीन अगर हम यहाँ पे साइनो ग्रुप लगा देंगे तो ये क्या हो जाएगा साइनो ग्वेनेडीन ओके डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो दिस दिस सिमेटेडीन कंटेन्स अ ग्वेनेडीन साइनो ग्वेनेडीन एनोलॉग ठीक है यहाँ पे क्या है यहाँ पे मिथाइल ग्रुप भी प्रेजेंट है सो इट्स नॉट कम्प्लीटली साइनो ग्वेनेडीन ग्रुप बट इट्स अ साइनो ग्वेनेडीन एनोलॉग ओके सो जब हम बात करेंगे रेनेटीडीन की तो रेनेटीडीन में क्या है uh, जो मॉडिफिकेशन है वो बेसिकली एट दिस प्लेस एट दाइट्रो ग्रुप ओके सो एंड सेम इज फॉर दिन एज वेल फेमोटिडीन के भी केस में क्या है यहाँ पे एन एच टू है यहाँ पे अमीनो ग्रुप है और यहाँ पे क्या है uh, यहाँ पे भी क्या है यहाँ पे सब्सिटूंट है दैट इज अल्फर कंटेनिंग यहाँ पे क्या है ग्रुप uh, है ओके सो यू जस्ट हैव टू रिमेम्बर की मॉडिफिकेशन एक्चुअली में होता कहाँ पे है ठीक है सिमेटिडीन के केस में रेनेटिडीन फेमोटिडीन के केस में क्या है एट द टर्मिनल टर्मिनल नाइट्रोजन के भी जो जो सब्सिटूंट है वहां पे क्या है आपके मॉडिफिकेशन देखे जा रहे हैं या पाए जा रहे हैं सो यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर दी मॉडिफिकेशन डी एर स्टूडेंट्स सो आई जस्ट होप दैट इट इज क्लियर वेन आई टॉक अबाउट दी सिमेटिडीन सो इट्स दी क्लासिकल ड्रग सो इट्स यू कैन कंसिडर इट एज अ प्रोटोटाइप ऑफ द H1 of the H2 antagonist, but when I talk about the ranitidine, so ranitidine क्या है? It's uh, it's के जो action है, it's five times more potent than the cimetidine. जो ranitidine है, वो क्या है? वो five times more potent है than cimet than cimetidine, and this pemotidine is five to eight times more potent than ranitidine. ओके सो इसको कैसे याद रख सकते हैं सिमेटिडीन जो रेनेटिडीन है वो आपकी फाइव टाइम्स मोर पोर्टेंट है देन सिमेटिडीन एंड दिस फेमोटिडीन इज फाइव टू एट टाइम्स मोर पोर्टेंट देन दी रेनेटिडीन ओके सो ऐसे ही विद सर्टेन मॉडिफिकेशंस जब भी थेरापेटिक इफेक्ट में ड्रग्स के चेंजेस पाए जाते हैं देन देर देर कम्स दी दी न्यू ड्रग ओके सो दिस इज हाउ दी दी ड्रग इज बीन इज बीन फॉर्म्ड अंडर दी एच टू एंटेस्टमेनिक्स ग्रुप Moving ahead to the structure activity relationship of the H2 antihistaminics. So first point says that this H2 antagonists are basically used in the treatment of the acid uh, indigestion, GERD, that is gastroesophageal reflux disease, peptic ulcers, and also it is used in the treatment of the hyposecretory disorders, that is the the hyposecretion of the acid and the pepsin enzyme. When I talk about the H2 antihistaminics, so basically when you look at the structure, so yes, uh, we'll be having the imidazole group. We'll be having the imidazole group. It's not necessary, but we are just having the uh, prototype. So there it will be containing a chain, and uh, then to this chain uh, the polar group is being attached. Okay, so this is the we'll be discussing the modifications at this uh, structure okay so this basically contains a heterocyclic group and then there is a chain and then at the end polar group has been present okay so as i have told you that this h2 antagonist or h2 blockers what it does is uh, it competitively antagonize the action of histamine at the h2 receptor so it should have the structure which is been similar to the histamine iske jo structure honge wo histamine se milte julte hone chahiye theek hai so in order uh, in order for it to get come uh, it 
antagonize the action of histamine at the H2 receptor. Okay, when you look at the third point, it says that the imidazole ring is not essential for the competitive inhibition. Okay, imidazole ring uh, compulsory nahi hai competitive inhibitions ke liye. As you see that heterocyclic ring, thiazole and furane, furone also possess H2 antagonist activity. Let me show it to you guys that uh, when I talk about the semetidine, semetidine ke case mein imidazole ring hai. Okay, ye bhi H2 antagonist hai. Renetidine ke case mein furone hai aur femetidine ke case mein thiazole ring hai. Okay. So, uh, both of it also possess the uh, H2 antagonist activity. So, it's not compulsory that the imidazole ring uh, ne is needed to be present for the competitive inhibition. Uh, okay, when I talk about the fifth point, it says that the maximum activity is shown with imidazole containing H2 antihistaminics. So, it says that H2 antihistaminics is imidazole present. Hai. In that case, jo maxim, uh, the maximum activity is seen. Example is the simetidine. The sixth point says that the ring and the nitrogen group, okay, it should be separated by uh, equivalent of two to four carbon atoms, which has been required or necessary for the H2 antagonist activity. So, uh, what it says to your students, it says that the uh, uh, ring is the heterocyclic ring or the polar group, hai, that is the nitrogen, uh, nitrogen uh, which, which should be a polar group, okay. So, the uh, heterocyclic uh, ring hai or nitrogen group hai, it should be separated by equivalent of two to four carbon atoms uh, which is very much mandatory for the h2 antagonist activity i hope that this is clear to you guys it's very simple uh it's may itna kuch zyada samajhne ko nahi it's very simple you just have to see the modifications at the heterocyclic uh, structure and then you have to see, see you have to see the the modifications at the, at the chain and the polar group Moving ahead to the seventh point, which says that the isosteric thioether linkage present shows maximum H2 antagonist activity. Okay, so uh, uh, what do I mean by the thioether linkage? Okay, so this is uh, this linkage, okay, that is the R, S, R, that is the alkyl group. This is the alkyl group and this is the sulfur group. So this linkage is known as the thioether linkage. Okay, so this linkage is known as the thioether linkage. And this linkage is uh, uh, is required for the H2 antagonist activity. Okay, dear students, the uh, the eighth point says that the terminal nitrogen group should be basic and polar in nature, and that's why I have seen I, I have uh, uh, I have uh, shown you the structure containing the polar group. Okay, यहाँ पे क्या heterocyclic group है, ये chain है, and to this chain the polar group is attached. Okay, uh, so uh, jo terminal nitrogen hai, wo kya hai? it should be basic in nature and also it should be polar uh, in nature. The last point says that groups that are positively charged at the physiological uh, pH should not be present at the terminal nitrogen. Okay, yeah, it says the last point hai, wo kya hai? Wo hai ki it says that jo positively charged group hai, hai? at the physiological pH. Hai? Body ke physiological pH pe Jovi groups agar positively charged honge, it should not be present at the terminal nitrogen as it shows the agonist activity. So instead of showing the antagonist activity, uh, wo kya karega? Wo agonist activity show, uh, show karta hai, uh, And therefore, uh, jovi groups positively charged hai at the physiological pH should not be attached to the terminal nitrogen. I hope that this uh, SAR is clear to you guys. Just let me... Uh, just uh, summarize for you. So, the uh, first point hai, wo, it's about the heterocyclic uh, heterocyclic ring. So, heterocyclic ring mein kya hai? Uh, you have to just remember ki yahan pe midazole ring compulsory nahi hai. Thiazole and furone can also be present. Okay, with methyl substitution, that is alkyl mein kya hai? Methyl substitution agar kar denge, then there forms the cimetidine. Thik hai? And then, uh, jo heterocyclic group hai or jo nitrogen hai, it should be separated by minimum of 2 to 4 carbon atoms equivalent four carbon atoms for H2 antagonist activity and the thioether linkage uh, is, uh, is required for the uh, uh, for the H2 antagonist activity and the terminal nitrogen kya hai, wo basic or polar in nature hone chahiye or positively charged group nahi present hone chahiye at the terminal nitrogen. So I just, I just hope that this is clear to you guys and yes uh, just let me give you a short trick ki aap isko kaise yaad rakh sakte hai, uh, you can do this in sentences, what do you do in exams? What do you do in the point of view? Se, aap kya uh, just take a piece of paper, dear students, and draw the uh, basic structure. Hai? Basic structure you draw. Karna. For example, you are just drawing the basic structure containing a chain uh, and a polar group. Okay? So what you have to do is, suppose this is a piece of a paper. 
ठीक है उसी पीस ऑफ पेपर में आपको जो जो मॉडिफिकेशन है उसके सराउंडिंग में आप लिखते हुए चलिए फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर ये हेट्रोसाइक्लिक ग्रुप है सो यू जस्ट राइट डाउन दैट दिस इज दी हेट्रोसाइक्लिक ग्रुप दिस इज दी हेट्रोसाइक्लिक ग्रुप और हेट्रोसाइक्लिक ग्रुप के अंदर जो भी पॉइंट्स आते हैं वो आप यहाँ यहीं पे मैंशन करते हुए चलिए देन टॉकिंग अबाउट दी चेन ठीक है चेन के रिगार्डिंग जो भी पॉइंट है एस ए आर में आ, आप पढ़ते हैं वो आप यहाँ पे लिखते हुए चले जाइए Then talking about the polar group, ki polar group group humne kya padha tha? Humne padha that should be basic in nature, it should be polar in nature, and it uh, positively charged group nahi present hona chahiye. Okay, so uh, just uh, in a piece of paper, write down, uh, write down each and everything. Agar aap aise sentences mein yaad karenge, so it will be quite confusing uh, for you guys, because you have to study one SAR nahi padna. You have to study a, a lot of uh, SARs of uh, different drugs. ठीक है क्लासेस ऑफ ड्रग्स सो यू जस्ट हैव टू डू सच थिंग्स ठीक है जस्ट टेक अ पीस ऑफ पेपर ड्रॉ दी स्ट्रक्चर उसके सराउंडिंग में आप जो भी मॉडिफिकेशन है वो आप लिखते हुए वहां पे चलिए इट विल बी वेरी यूजफुल एट दी लास्ट टाइम रिविजन एट दी लास्ट मोमेंट जो भी रिविजन आपको करने इट्स वेरी यूजफुल ठीक है फ्रॉम एग्जाम्स पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो दिस इज अ ट्रिक फॉर यू गाइज थ्रू विच यू कैन जस्ट स्टडी दी एस ए आर Okay, so I just hope that this lecture is clear to you guys. So yes, thank you so much for watching the video. And yes, if you find my lectures useful, then consider subscribing to my YouTube channel Pharmacopedia as it motivates me to uh, make such educational content for you guys. And yes, in case of any uh, doubt, make sure that you ask in the comment section below. And yes, do not forget to give your reviews in the comment section below uh, as it is really valuable to me. Okay, so yes, do not forget to like, share. and subscribe to pharmacopedia and yes i will be right back with another such educational content till then keep studying and take care